Let's open with a word of prayer. Father, Lord, I'm so thankful for the day. God, I just thank you for your blessings. God, for the wonderful time we've had of worship and study of your word this morning, Father. God, I just thank you for your spirit, such a sweet, sweet spirit you've given us here, Father. God, I just pray that we can continue to share that spirit with everyone that walks through these doors, Father. God, I just pray tonight is a special time. God, that uh, all of us learned something to make us better servants in your kingdom. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a couple of notes. Y'all prepare for vacation Bible school. Time to start getting ready. If you need a job, Miss Beverly will give you one. Uh, we got to pray for Brother Mike and Ron as they're in Africa. We'll have the offices will be closed tomorrow. Won't nothing be here. We won't have any kind of visitation or prayer meeting tomorrow night. Our next time to come together will be Wednesday night. That's all I got, Brother Hughes. That's all you. That's it. That's all we got. This morning. Hello. There it is. This morning, it, uh, Miss Helen reminded Roxy, and Roxy reminded me I did not give y'all a verse for the why part of victory. So if you wrote it down, it's going to, it is Mark 11, and then I just went right on through it and didn't even remember it, uh, Mark 11, 24, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you've received it, and it will be yours. You're welcome, you're welcome. So if you wrote notes, that I just completely left it out. Next. Oh, you get up? It's you now? Are we videoing next? No. It's you? Sure. You're waiting on us? No. Okay. I'm waiting on everybody else to get here. Oh, you may be here. Oh. All right. Hey, it don't matter. Hey, God's got who he wants to be here, here right now. Let's all stand and we're going to worship this evening. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Take a breath. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender. I love Wayne. Great things he has taught us, great things he had done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our victory when
Walking in sunlight all of my journey Over the mountains, through the deep vale Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee Promise divine that never can fail Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight Flooding my soul with glory divine Hallelujah, I am rejoicing Singing His praises, Jesus is mine Shadows around me, shadows above me Never conceal my Savior and guide He is the light in him is no darkness ever I'm walking close to his side heavenly sunlight heavenly sunlight flooding my soul with glory divine hallelujah I am rejoicing singing his praises Jesus is mine in the bright sunlight, ever rejoicing, pressing my way to mansions above, singing his praises, gladly I'm walking, walking in sunlight, sunlight of love, heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is mine. Y'all have a seat. Freedom, liberty, it's something we celebrate, something we take pride in, something we have struggled so hard for and have so strongly defended, but true freedom? It's not something we attain or something we have to fight for. It's something we simply accept. God has already made us free through Christ. Free from our guilt and shame. Free from our past failures. Free from the chains of this world. Free from our sin. This freedom isn't something we can gain on our own. It's a gift we must accept from God. We are blessed to live in a country where we have these liberties that we celebrate, to speak our minds, to disagree, to meet together and worship God. But without the true freedom offered through Jesus Christ, it all means nothing, and we still remain slaves to fame, to money, to lust, and to self. But Christ has made us truly free, free to live out our true purpose, to glorify God, we no longer show glory to the things of this world. In everything we do, we glorify the only one who is deserving. Today, full of the freedom given us by Jesus, we do what we were created to do. We give God all the glory. Good evening. One more time. Y'all hear me? My own, in my own, in my own. Uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Tonight we're going to talk about freedom, liberty. Y'all know what liberty means? Freedom, okay. All right. Pretty sure it's where they get the word liberal. We ain't going to talk about that mess tonight. No, I'm picking. All right. All right. Uh, Galatians 5, 1, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. Do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. There were people back in them times that were trying to talk them out of believing. Talk them out of the new way. That's, that's a new way. You need to stick to the old way. Stick to the law. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of them guys today, some guys today, they'll say we're under grace, we're not under the law. And they use it 
to do whatever they want to do. Um, Y'all know me and Brother Mike talk. Sometimes it gets pretty deep. Y'all can imagine. That's kind of a joke, but it does get deep. Um, People in our area um, that's tearing down uh, churches, preachers, ministers, and uh, just by the way they they translate with how they they give the word to the people, you know. And when you listen to them, when I listen to them, I, I, I listen to a, a man in the pulpit that's giving them the word of God. Well, they say he he's not. Yet these same people that are cutting down pastors and stuff are out on the golf courses drinking and cussing and carrying on because they're under grace. It's very dangerous. Romans 6.15 says, uh, What then, shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? Paul said, Certainly not. To be entangled again in our, in our scripture tonight, to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Okay, when you're entangled in that sin where we once were, I mean, everybody's saved in here, right? Amen? Okay. Um, we were in that bondage. We had that yoke on us. Well, it's like what he said about the law. It was a, a yoke. Y'all know what a yoke is, right? Not the yellow part of the egg. Uh-huh. I got one person that got that. All right, but, you know, they're hanging on an old cow or something or an old workhorse or something and get after it. Well, it gets heavy. The load gets heavy to bear, just like sin is in our life, like what we was born with. Don't go back. Um, on in, in, that, um, in that chapter, it talks about um, you falling from grace. These are people that were uh, really into the law. They really followed the law. And then when Jesus showed up, they said, wow, you know, we're going to follow Jesus. Well, then, like I said, these other people come up and says, hey, we're going to, uh, you need to go back to the way it used to be. Y'all ever had that said to you? There's no need in doing this new thing. It's not working. It's all according to what you put into it. You know, it requires effort. Y'all know the Christian life requires effort. You believe that? (laughs) It does. But uh, like my brother said this morning, you know, God will do it. But you got to let him. You know, he's right there. Well, um, if you go about life saying, well, I'm under grace, I can just do anything, everything's just groovy. God has forgiven me, he will not ever forsake me, the Bible says, so I can just live like I want to live. Seeing it up, that's not it. A true follower of Christ, where it says in the, in the word how You are a uh, new creation. I stand before you tonight a a new creation. The old me was not like this. In fact, I don't even remember everything the old me used to do. Praise God. But I know it was bad. It didn't follow this word right here. And it was not honoring to God. It wasn't honoring to me. It wasn't honoring to my family. God made me new. Yes, I'm under grace. But I love him. And I want to make him proud. You know, I don't care about me being proud. Yeah, I mean, we got pride. Anybody got pride in here? It's okay to have that pride. But when pride in self gets to be your God, that's when the fall's coming. Huh? Me and my wife got to watch Esther in uh, Branson, Queen Esther. If you ever get the opportunity, go see that. 
uh, set man, passion play set man, you would be amazed. Have you ever seen it, Queen Esther? You need to go. Dude, that thing moves. It moves and it opens up at the same time. It's just whew, like 50 tons, what they see. Anyhow, my bad, back to the ranch. But um, <laughs> being a new creation, um, John 8, 35 and 36, Jesus answered them, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. Okay, so we were in sin. Now we're not. Right? I lived in sin. Now I still sin, but I don't want to stay there. Because I know that if I stay in that sin, it's, it's not honoring to God. And remember, I love him. Because he first loved me. And he, he sent his only begotten son to die for me and paid my sin debt. I want to do what's honoring to him. Um, and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you are free indeed. At the moment of salvation, the spirit is indwelt in us. That it's, it gives us that discernment between right and wrong, right? It, it, it uh, convicts us of sin. It convicts us of righteousness. So there's your right and wrong. Convicts us of judgment. Therefore, we no longer have to be a slave to that sin. We don't have to have that bondage that he was talking about getting back in. Now, we know people that... They get saved and they fall back in the same way of life that they were in. We got a text today of somebody we know that was on fire for God and God was really doing great things in their life and all of a sudden nobody heard from him. And what did he say? The devil had a little time, but he didn't win. He's back living at the sober house. He's back doing his thing, you know. Let me ask y'all something and, and tell me the truth. You think God turns his back on you when you do that? Good answer. God is there. You know, sometimes we fall off in a deep, dark depression that, oh, we just done that. It ain't no sense in going back. I did that. It didn't work. In fact, I fell deeper and deeper and deeper. And I'm telling you, when my ears were open, when my heart had been softened, guess who was right there? God was. And he welcomed me right back in. I had been acting stupid, ignorant, crazy, foolish, just whatever, you name it, I was doing it. And he welcomed me right back in. Jesus makes us free. Just like that video said, we have to accept it, though. It's a free gift. He's paid the debt. We don't pay anything. All we have to do is accept it. That's not hard. Some people will argue you down if you say that. Call you a heretic and all kinds of stuff. Wait a minute. The Bible says so. It's a gift from God. 1 Peter 2.13 Therefore submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or to the governors or to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. It's what people, uh, you got to do what the government tells you to do. Right? For this is the will of God that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. God's going to get the glory out of it. All right? Now, when it comes time to where you shall bow, 
at the altar of Baal. I mean, that's what, that's what some are doing now. They just named it different. What you going to do then? If the president tells you to do that, what are you going to do? Are you going to bow at the altar of Baal? See what he's getting at here? See what I'm getting at? It, it's got to be close to following this word. This doesn't mean you just follow anything they say, because some of that stuff is just plumb evil. Now, as free, yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bondservants of God. Not using liberty as a cloak for vice. Again, I'm under grace. I can do anything. God will forgive me. If you have that attitude, check your salvation. With my kids, I give them a little, little lead, right? Y'all ever seen a lead rope on a horse? How long was that lead rope? Mostly. They're about six foot. All right. Well, a horse is acting crazy. How much lead you give him? <laughs> you don't. You go to the buckle, <laughs> you know, and you hold that sucker's head right there. That way he can't buck, snort, and kick, and all that kind of stuff. He starts acting right. You give him a little bit more, you give him about that much. He'll jerk a little bit, but he'll get it. After a while, you just drop that rope. He'll stand right there with you. Right? Yeah. We don't use that. Has God given us that freedom to do whatever we want to do? We are owned by him. We were saved by him. We accepted his free gift of salvation. We are under grace. But we don't use it to reach up there and unclick that rope ourselves. Makes sense. Okay. Honor all people. Love the brotherhood. Honor all people. Kind of like what you touched on this morning. You know, some people we don't really care to honor. Mm, you know, honor all people. Love the brotherhood. Love people. That was the greatest commandment, wasn't it? Right there be with it. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Fear God. Honor the king. Hmm. Honoring the king. I think we do a good job as American people honoring the president of the United States. Even as crazy as he is. You agree? I mean, I honor the office. I honor the man. I honor him by praying for him. And ain't nobody took him out. That's pretty honorable. <laughs> but what about fearing God, though? <laughs> that fear, that reverent fear. Which one do we do most? <laughs> do we fear God or honor the king most? We better fear God. Respect him. Honor his word. Like I said a while ago, whenever we go to, when we get saved, our, our bodies, we're indwelt with the Holy Spirit. We're spiritual people. Our spirit lines up with his spirit, right? He tells us what we need to do. Sometimes we do it, sometimes we don't, and then he convicts us and all that. And 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, not, Now the Lord is, is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, there's freedom. 
Y'all, I've witnessed a lot of people that don't have freedom in their life. And they're under something. Some kind of bondage. Some kind of uh, slavery, it seemed like. That they can't do as uh, certain things and they're scared to death to move, pretty much. They won't make a decision. They won't make a move in their life, you know, as far as their, their work or uh, education or anything like that. They're scared to death. And I, I never really understood that until recently. But um, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, freedom. What locks us up? You ever been so scared that you just lock up? You know, because the ultimate fear, like I'm talking about like being scared, ever, it seems like you just lock up. What's the ultimate fear in life? Huh? Death. Right? Yeah. Okay, so when you can walk through life and not have to worry about dying, <laughs> that's freedom, ain't it? Now, I mean, we don't have to act crazy like I used to do and climb pipe racks and stuff without a harness on and, you know, shimmy down booms of jig lifts from 80 foot up and such as that. That was just dumb. Yeah. What? You're out there giving my secrets away, ain't you? Sticking legs in conveyors and stuff. Man, that was recently. <clears throat> but, uh, or right, we'll say recently. Y'all realize that's been eight years ago? Wow. Man, Daniel, you getting old. Mm, I used to have hair. Um, but um, ain't it nice to go through life and to know that, that God's got us? Like Paul talked about it, if I live, I'm his. And if I die, I'm with him. <laughs> you know, let's go with it. You know, whatever God's got for me, let's go. Because if I'm here, I'm serving him. If I'm not here, I'm with him. Where's the fear in that? Huh? Where's the slavery in that? There ain't no. Ain't no. How many teachers we got in here? Oh. <laughs> My mama ain't here. Whew. So Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen? Amen. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled. The law... Never saved anybody. The law pointed out sin. Grace covered it. We cannot use that for our advantage. Now, tomorrow... How many of y'all grilling? A bunch of people going to grill. You can raise your hand. That's not, that's not a sin. Hello? I mean, come on. If somebody grills something, I'll eat it. All right. Never know. I might grill something. Knowing my wife, I'll do it. I don't mind. Hey. Think about those men. That gave their life. Fighting those battles. Having their uniform on, that government issued everything. 
I think it was government issued oxygen, probably. They didn't come back. They gave their life. They gave all. So we could have a building, air conditioning, TVs up there. I mean, just nice. It feels so good in here. We, we're not under a threat of, of a whole uh, platoon coming in and shutting us down and shooting half of us. And, huh? We can worship God. We can speak the name of Jesus on the corner. Hello? Think about those men. Think about those men. And when you think about those men, why don't you take time to hit your knees and you thank God for what he did, for the freedom that he allows daily. Even though if one, some of those men come through them doors or somebody comes up to you and says, hey, mm -mm, you profess Jesus as your Lord, you tell them yes. They pull a gun out and put it to your head, you tell them uh-huh even more. But you hit your knees and you thank God for what he did. You thank him for the sacrifice. For the freedom. For us to be able to live freely. Free of the fear of death. Free of fear of anything. But live in reverence, admonition of the Lord. You thank him. And if you're grilling... My telephone number is on the bulletin, I think. I will be happy to take your scraps. I've chewed on a bone before. If you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus, I'll be around for a few minutes after the service. There's people. There's people. I see I'm looking at all sides of this. They'll help you. They'll tell you who Jesus is. They'll introduce you to him. If you need uh, prayer for anything, let us know. Um, if y'all have any other announcements or anything for next week, y'all don't forget to pray for Brother Mike and Ron. Um, they got a couple of more days and then they'll make their way home, I guess. Ain't they leaving Wednesday or are they going to be back Wednesday? Okay. Okay, so they're leaving sometime tomorrow, maybe, Tuesday. Okay, just keep praying for Brother Mike. Pray for Ron, too, he's with him. There's great things happening right now over there. Great things. Some of the stuff he sent me, we're going to share it with y'all, I guess, whenever he gets back. And um, I don't know, we need to get that choir up here. They good. They real good. Yeah, we'd have to have a translator, I think. But other than that, y'all need a translator when I speak too, so it'll be all right. Anybody else? Got anything? Ma'am? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, let's stand. We'll be dismissed. Father, as we come to you to the end of the service, God, we just thank you, God, for what you've done for us. God, and what uh, tomorrow means for all of us, God, that, um, Lord, some family, some friends, uh, Father, that has given their life uh, to honor this nation. But God, it's for the values that this nation represents. God, it's this Christian values uh, that this nation uh, was built on. Father, they fought um, an evil enemy trying to erase that. And Father, they gave their life. We honor them, Father. But more, more than that, God, we, we trust you. We give you our everything. God, we... Um, we love you. We want to be new in you, Father. We want to give everything to you. Uh, but, Father, we thank you for what you've done, uh, for the sacrifice of your son, so we could have eternal life. 
uh, free from the burden of sin, uh, to have that abundant life now. Um, God, we just thank you, and I pray that our lives are honorable to you, and it shows just how much we love you. Father, as we leave this place, I ask you for safety, and um, Lord, bring us back the next appointed time with smiles on our face and soft hearts and listening ears. Lord, uh, be with Brother Mike as they're traveling, uh, him and Ron. Um, Lord, when they're over there on another continent, God, we just pray for their safety, God, but we pray that you are glorified over there through them. Um, but God, let them come back and share what they have seen and heard uh, while they're there. And God, we just praise you even more. God, we love you. Thank you for loving us first. In Jesus' name, amen.